Imagine you're walking beneath those tall electric towers that stretch from one horizon to the other. And then you wonder, how is it that those high voltage lines don't just zap everything they touch? Why doesn't electricity leak into the steel towers and flow directly to the earth? Well, my friend, the silent hero here is something most people completely overlook, the humble insulator. You see, the main job of these insulators is pretty straightforward. They break the path. Sounds intense, right? Electricity always wants to find the easiest path to the ground. Now, if we just hang the conductors on metal towers without any insulation, you know what'll happen? Zap! The current will simply find its way to the ground via the metal supports, causing dangerous leakage, power loss, and possibly a few crispy towers. To prevent that, we use insulators to support the conductors without allowing the current to pass through to the supporting structure. So basically, they're like the super reliable best friends in an electrical setup. Strong, loyal, and always keeping things together without ever letting you down. Now, not just any material can be used as an insulator for transmission lines. It has to be a proper superhero, strong both mechanically and electrically. These insulators need to bear the load of conductors, handle the wild winds in thunderstorms, and still not let even a little bit of current sneak through. And trust me, electricity is one sneaky fellow. So we use materials like porcelain, a blend of kaolin, feldspar, and quartz. When fired at high temperatures, this becomes tough like a rock and super insulating. Sometimes materials like glass or steatite are used too, but porcelain remains the crowd favorite. Tell me in the comments, did you know porcelain was used in high-voltage insulators, or were you picturing something plastic or rubber-like? Now let's dive into the different types of insulators you'll see on these lines. Let's start with the pin-type insulator. Picture this. It looks like a mushroom stuck on top of a crossarm, and it holds the conductor with a groove at the top. It's simple, compact, and does the job perfectly, for voltages up to 33 kilovolts. Beyond that, though, it starts getting bulky and expensive. Imagine stacking up these pin types one after another like scoops of ice cream. It just doesn't make sense. That's where the next type comes in. Enter the suspension type insulator. This is the string of discs you might have seen hanging from towers like a necklace. Each disc is rated for around 11 kilovolts, and depending on your system voltage, you just add more of them, like Lego blocks. And hey, fun fact, if one of these discs gets damaged, no worries. You just replace the damaged one and you're good to go. Economical and efficient. Plus, the way it swings freely gives it flexibility to adjust itself under different wind and load conditions. So, here's a fun one for you. Next time you're on a road trip, count how many discs are hanging on the string. Multiply that by 11 kV and boom, you'll know the phase voltage of that transmission line. Try it out and comment below how many discs you spotted. Now let's talk about strain insulators. These guys are the gym trainers of the insulator world. Whenever there's a dead end, a sharp curve, or anywhere the conductor is under high tension, strain insulators come in to save the day. For low voltages, we use shackle insulators, which look like donuts stuck to the pole. But at higher voltages, we use strain assemblies made by arranging suspension discs vertically. And yes, these can be used in parallel when tensions are crazy high, especially when lines are crossing a huge river or valley. Now, let's talk about what can go wrong. Even superheroes have their breaking points, right? Insulators fail mainly due to electrical breakdowns, either through flashover or puncture. In flashover, an arc jumps through the air gaps around the insulator, like a lightning bolt dancing on the surface. In this case, the insulator survives, but it's not ideal. In puncture, though, the arc goes straight through the insulator body. It's like drilling through the heart, and unfortunately, that's game over. The insulator gets destroyed due to excessive heat and permanent damage. To ensure durability, we measure the safety factor of an insulator, which is simply the ratio of puncture strength to flashover voltage. For a good insulator, this should be around 10. That means it'll flash over 10 times before it gets punctured once. Safe, right? If you've seen transmission towers closely, you'll notice different arrangements based on the voltage levels. For example, for 132 kV systems, the towers are about 12.5 meters tall and have a simpler insulator layout. But for 220 kV, they go all the way up to 41.6 meters with a more layered arrangement of insulators and conductors. So, next time you're passing by such towers, 
Take a closer look. You'll be able to read the system voltage just by observing the number of disks. Engineers truly leave clues everywhere. So that was the amazing world of insulators in overhead transmission lines. From pin type to suspension, strain to shackle, each of them plays a critical role in keeping our power system running safely and reliably. If you learned something new today, don't forget to like this video. It really helps the channel and encourages me to make more such detailed and fun explanations. And hey, do subscribe to Electrology if you haven't already. We've got many more topics coming up on power systems, protection, machines and more. Also, I want to hear from you. Have you ever seen a damaged insulator or noticed a flashover on a rainy day? Let me know your experiences in the comments. And yes, if you'd like to support this channel, check out the thanks button below the video. Even a small token of appreciation goes a long way. If you want to go one step further and get exclusive perks, early access and special shout outs, click on the join button and become a channel member. Until next time, stay curious, stay charged, and never forget the little heroes hanging quietly on our power lines. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.